In today's lesson, I will introduce and perform a drill that I created to improve making the money ball. Here's today's schedule. First, we are looking at breaks from 8, 9, and 10 ball. Then, I will introduce the drill with two different difficulty levels and also perform it with my GoPro. After that, you will get some important tips on the way that will definitely help you making the money ball in matches. So, let's start. When playing 8-ball, the money ball obviously is the 8, so I want you to watch this break and just focus where the 8-ball goes. On this 9-ball break, just concentrate on a 9. And on this 10-ball break, concentrate on where the 10-ball goes. As you see, the money ball has a very high chance to end around this area when breaking. That's why on today's drill, we will set up the 9 ball at this position. If you want to do the easier version, the other balls are placed like this and for the advanced version, the balls are set up like this. You now have to play the balls in this order and of course you have to respot the 9. That way you will learn to get position on the money ball from many different situations and you will also learn to make it from different places. Alright, we're starting with ball in hand and of course if you're a right-handed player then you're allowed to mirror the whole drill. As you see on the position I use on the one ball, I'm just able to play it with a center ball without manipulating anything and the only thing I have to take care of is the right speed. This maybe looks a bit too soft, but it's actually the perfect position on the 9 ball. Because I want to end somewhere around here for the 2 ball, and all I have to do is basically play a follow shot with the right amount of speed, and the cue ball should travel towards this point very naturally. As you see, we ended up perfectly on the 2 ball, we have a very nice angle to get to the 9 again. Well, I now decide to go 2 rails towards the 9, towards this side of the 9 ball, because on this side, all I have to do is to play a natural ball again. If I would have gone for the other side of the 9 ball, it would have been way too difficult to get towards the 3, but on this side all I have to do is to play a follow shot again. Alright, this looks very nice, we have a very nice position on the 3 ball. And now I of course want to be on the other side again because the 4 ball is on the right part of the table. So I just need to concentrate on passing the center of the table to have the 9 ball into the left corner pocket here. As you can see this turned out perfectly. Of course we now are a bit too straight but we are still able to draw the ball. Even if we're going further, we always have a shot on a 9 ball to get easily towards the 4 ball. And here straight is totally okay as long as we're not going towards the long rail with just a tiny bit of an angle. If so, we want to have a big angle to go into the long rail or the perfect angle is basically like this where we just have to draw the ball. And as you see the 5 ball is at the center of the table, so here it doesn't matter on which side we end, but I'm trying to end on the right side with very important enough angle. As you see I'm not drawing it back a lot, but just a tiny bit because I want to have enough angle um, to easily go towards the 5 ball with just a natural ball again. And you see here I'm not hitting um, as high as possible because I have a bit less angle than before and that way I want to avoid to hit that 7 ball by just using a bit of high. If I would have gone for maximum high English here, I would have gone into the 7 ball. 
And here, this actually is not the perfect angle that we have on the five ball because um, the natural two rail path is now very, very important. That's why I have to go one rail. As you see here, it would have been perfect, but um, we have to take what the table gets us. So I'm just playing high with a touch of left hand spin, really a tiny, tiny bit. We just want to pass the six ball, as you see here. And this turned out perfectly again with a very nice shot on a nine ball. Again, we're a bit too straight, but this doesn't matter because of the position of the six. We can just draw the cue ball back again. And very important, don't overdo it. Just draw it back a tiny bit that we don't end up straight on the six ball because the angle is our friend here. We want to have enough angle to easily go towards the nine again with a very natural ball. And as you see, this is basically the perfect angle. We will go two rails towards the line of the nine ball. And we don't want to end on the bottom side of the nine ball, but on the top side. But you will see this in a minute. As you see, this is the angle we didn't want to have because now we're going away from the 7 ball. So the other angle would have been perfect and straight by the way would have been horrible. But this is still doable because we just have a tiny bit of an angle. And you see with high and a touch of right hand spin we can still go nicely towards the 7 ball. But don't overdo it, do just a tiny bit because we still want that angle on the 7 ball to get easily to the 9 again. And now on the 9, it's the same thing. We want to end above the 9, above the straight line, because we want to go towards the 8 ball. So it's very important to not underhit the shot, but if so, you're overhitting the shots. Okay, and this looks like a very nice angle. We're on top of the straight line, and we are going perfectly towards the 8 ball. Here I'm deciding just to play basically a center shot. I don't want to play follow shot because that way I get too close to the 8 ball. But the center ball brings me in a very good position. And I ended up with a bit too little angle but this still works as you will see in the GoPro view very soon. We have two options. We could either play the 9 just into the side pocket which makes the position a bit easier. But I'm feeling very comfortable with just stunning the ball out, going above the 9. And as long as we are above the 9 ball, as you see here, we have a shot on the 9 ball. And this is much easier than getting that pinpoint position on the 9 ball. That's why I prefer to play the 9 ball into the corner pocket here. Alright, we finished the drill and now you will learn 4 important principles. And what you will see is by the way an excerpt of an older video called Never Miss the Money Ball. That's why my voice probably sounds a bit different. What players often do is they put all the pressure on the last remaining ball. Look at this situation. We're on the 8 ball and have to get position for the 9. We decide to just bring the key ball somewhere down table and we'll probably have a shot on the 9 ball. And yes, this 9 ball is very makeable. But if you're in a match, maybe even at Hill Hill, this 9 ball suddenly becomes very missable. So let's go back to the 8. Usually players start to really feel the pressure once they're on the money ball and not that much on previous shots. So we use this behavior to make this shot on the 8 ball already the match winner. What we have to do is to really commit and make sure that we get a good position on the 9 ball. If we can achieve this, we remove all the pressure from the 9 ball because this is a straight in stop shot. And here even the 7 ball can already be the match winner. If we're able to get straight on the 8 ball, we just have to play two very simple stop shots. So our task is to detect these shots and to make sure that we have a clear mind where we want to be on the last ball. 
But of course, this won't work 100% of the time, so let's jump into the next tip. Playing position When we're shooting balls, we always try to get the cue ball to a certain position on the table so that we can continue our run. But of course, we are not doing this with only one ball on the table. Is it a good thing because we don't have to concentrate on getting position anymore? In my opinion, it isn't. One thing about pool is that you always want to do the same routine on every shot. And we usually do that, except for the last ball on the table. So we're doing things differently. So my second advice is to also bring the cue ball to a certain position, even when you're shooting the money ball. This will have the advantage that you're not treating any ball differently. It will also prevent you from scratching, caused by no awareness of the cue ball's path. And in some cases, you can make life a lot tougher for your opponent if you miss. For example, on a shot like that, I always try to bring the cue ball three rails towards the short rail. Don't get me wrong, I'm not telling you to always force the cue ball towards the short rail or a certain position. Do what is natural and don't try anything that will harm your shot making. For example here, it wouldn't be clever trying to bring the cue ball towards the short rail. Never roll the ball in. Rolling a ball in is always dangerous. The cue ball and the object ball can both roll off. There is also the danger of a kick or skid. This usually happens when you roll a ball in and is caused by dirt on the contact point. Here this will cause the cue ball to basically climb up the object ball, which will straighten the angle of the object ball. When playing a ball with outside spin or in the best case as a stop or stun shot, this will never happen. For example here I'm elevating my cue a little bit to play a stun shot. This prevents a kick and I can also play the shot with more confidence. Another advantage is that if you shoot the ball with more confidence and power, that if you miss, the chances are higher that the object ball won't stay in front of the pocket. Especially if you're missing on the pro side. Don't treat the ball differently. I already talked about not treating the last ball differently regarding positional play, but what I mean here is to not treat it mentally differently. I often watch players who play pretty fast and fluent, but once they're on the money ball, they take more time, even if the shot is easier than previous ones. Look at this for example. I played fluently and once I'm on the 9 ball, I stop and take much more time. This is a mental mistake and will give your mind the time to realize the importance of the ball, which will automatically put more pressure on you and especially gives your mind the time to think about bad things and therefore will get you out of flow. So don't take that extra time if it's not required. Of course, if the shot is tough and you need time to collect, focus and prepare the shot, it's totally fine. But don't do this just because it's the last remaining ball, because as I said, this will give your mind the time to sabotage yourself. If you liked this video, if you enjoyed it, if you learned something new, please consider to like, comment, share it with your friends, subscribe to my channel. A thank you goes out to my sponsors, to my patrons, to everyone who is supporting me. And uh, yeah, that's it for today. Thanks for watching guys. And as always, see you at the next lesson. Take care.